What is going on everybody? I'm going to give you some tips on how to paint your Warhammer army or any miniature game you're playing. Now these are going to be great if you are new to the hobby or new to painting your army or you've just never successfully finished painting a whole army before and you always get hobby burnout. Um, tip number one is going to be use less colors. Use less colors in your color scheme and avoid any patterns. So you don't want to over get overly excited and pick like a whole bunch of colors. You got six different browns for every different type of strap and pouch. You got five different armor panel colors. You know, you're going to make it the best thing ever. And the best thing ever is things with a lot of color. But that's not true. You want to stick to just a few colors and you want to make them very clean. Now, when I say clean, I mean if you get paint, say you're painting my blue shirt and you get blue paint, just a little bit right there, just one, whoop, just go back and clean it up. That's a good habit to have. Go back and clean it up. If you're doing your eye and you get a little big eye, you get the white above your eye down where the bottom eyelid should be go back with your tan and clean it up so less colors and make it very clean so step number two will be cleanliness you want to be very clean you're gonna base coat you don't base coat sloppy base coat your miniatures clean this means less mistakes of color spilling over into other areas and more or less and less as time goes on and you practice but it also means less brush strokes in general because the less time you have to go back and fix those little marks um, that just saves you time and when you're trying to get a whole army painted it's not a race but at some point you want to see some real progress so with less colors and cleanliness you should always remember if you paint something on the model, a color, you are telling the viewer that that material is that color. So this is something that a lot of new painters miss and they will have a miniature with blue pants, a blue shirt, and then like a blue gun, right? And you're telling me that the cloth shirt is made out of the same material as gun, just generic gun, right? Because you're using the same color. All I know is the viewer, I mean, obviously I can see the miniature, but all I know is what you're trying to tell me is that shirt's made of blue cloth. That gun is made of blue cloth now if you use the same blue. Now, if it's a metal armor and a gun, then they could both be blue because they're both metal. So this is a mistake people make. They'll make like their boots and helmet the same color. And this does not include Space Marines who are all the same color, right? So just be aware of that. When you're painting something a certain color, you're telling the viewer that that material is that color. Now, of course, there's ways to spruce it up with different highlighting techniques and blending and different, you know, tricks you could do to you know make it look like a blue cloth and then a blue metallic surf surface but for the most part try to not use the same colors on different materials on the miniature and this is going to require a little bit of imagination that those are actual material you know that their cloth is made of cloth so just a little tip there uh, step number three Actually, I think that was step number three. Step number four is actually spend some time painting. I want you to log in to your favorite video game that you're currently playing and figure out how to type in whatever, if it's on the computer or maybe it is in the menu, and look at hours played. I bet the hours you've played your favorite video game are just thousands. Right. I played Dota 2. I used to play World of Warcraft like 10 years ago. Um, 
So like Dark Age of Camelot, Ashran's Call, and you like look at your hours played, divide it by 24, and all of a sudden you spent like two months worth of time sitting there and you literally have nothing to show for it. You might be good at the video game, which is nothing for most people, unless you're getting paid on Twitch or YouTube or whatever for playing video games. So basically, you are wasting a ton of time doing that. Now, it's not fulfilling, and if you are truly interested in painting or having a painted army, you're going to need to spend time painting your army. Simple. A lot of people don't understand this. They have too many TV shows, they watch too many sporting events, they play too many video games, they read too many books maybe, they go to too many movies, they are on Netflix too much, they're on YouTube too much, whatever it is. And all of this time spent is usually time taking away from painting. Because if you're doing this in your free time, then some of that free time has to be spent painting and because this is an artistic uh, hobby or maybe you're approaching it more like a chore that you just want to have a painted army so you don't have you know when you attend an event but it does take time there's no way to just speed through if you're doing a miniature an hour then you're doing it pretty fast now the amount of time you're actually holding a miniature and touching it with your brush it's very hard to actually time, and especially if you're waiting for like washes to dry, and that's when you turn your chair and maybe pay attention to the YouTube or the TV show or whatever, or you paint a little bit and then maybe you glance over. But I think for the most part, just listen and get some painting done. And I think that's about it. Use less colors, so a simple, clean color scheme don't go too crazy for your first army especially and even later on it's you don't see like insanely high level painted armies the way you would expect with the amount of high level painters there are there are very very nice armies but at the end of the day it's still the process of repeating it over and over again and it's hard to maintain that enthusiasm to produce like the highest quality that's why like in a group in a competition for painting miniatures the group category is always like three to ten or whatever right it's never 40 right maybe if you're doing some big massive diorama but even then a lot of massive dioramas with a lot of miniatures you can tell that the, each individual model has not had the meticulous care of like somebody's bust painting so they did one bust, you had to do 40 miniatures swirling around the gash. It probably kind of just made them a glowing color because you weren't going to do a realistic skeleton over and over and over again. Or maybe you did. I don't know. Most people don't. So when you're using these tips and actually painting, you'll be surprised that you will actually get some armies painted or at least some units. Uh, I think your opponents will be happy if you show up and every week you got five more models, at least in progress, right? You got one week, you got five models in progress. Next week, you got five done and five more base coated. Next week, they got a wash on them and five more are primed or base coated if you can get a primer. Uh, I, that'll be a little bonus tip. If you don't have an airbrush, possibly look into colored primers like Army Painter. I think Vallejo's now making a colored primer spray can. And that will just give you that first step done. If you were doing a Blood Angels army and you had a nice red colored primer that you liked and then you hit it with like a Reichland flesh shade all over the model and then you say highlighted with some red or say you sprayed it red, dry brushed it lighter red, did a Reichland flesh shade and then dry brushed it lighter red again you would have the armor way, way more complete in very, very short amount of time. And then every night you could paint five belts. And then the next night you paint five bolters. And the next night you do 20 guys lenses. Just, you know, the base coat them. Whatever, right? So there's really no secret sauce on this, but 
less colors, work cleanly, don't confuse the viewer with where you're placing these colors between materials, and this will give you just a nice sharp, fully painted army. Everybody will be happy to play against it, and uh, I think you'll be pretty proud of yourself when you're all done. Please subscribe, uh, check out the links below, it's all my Christmas shopping, it's all basically hobby supplies I use. Uh, stay tuned, I'll be doing a Kickstarter for my own line of paintbrushes. I've been using my little one here lately. These are the ghost brushes. I made the biggest mistake ever in brush painting that I always tell you not to do. But uh, I did let the blue paint get down into the ferrule. I tried to wash it pretty good. It's still holding an okay tip. I think you can see that, but it's holding a pretty good tip. But I do suspect it will start to split because I screwed up and let paint get in the ferrule. And part of the reason I did that, this is just a little bonus nonsense here at the end of the video. Part of the reason I did that though is because I was using this little palette and not my wet palette means when I'm going into the dip of that cup I'm going in down and then squishing it to the side and then up right because it's a curve so I'm going into the paint and then down through the paint and now I put it into the ferrule but it looks like it's still holding up pretty good so I'm pretty excited about that that will be on Kickstarter coming soon I'm sure I'll spam everybody in who subscribed with that uh, when that gets done. I'm still waiting on the manufacturers to get some final uh, completed samples and test models. Samples. These will be, you see they have no label. They're birchwood, aluminum, nylon hair. And so far they're working out pretty good. And they'll be pretty cheap, like three bucks a piece. And then maybe a little price break if you buy the whole set of eight. So thank you so much, guys and gals, although YouTube shows me that there's no gals watching, but uh, thank you so much. Please subscribe. I'll see you again very soon.